This video is published under the Creative Commons license BYNCSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this lecture series on thermal unit operations. And I'm still in this small video sub-series, so to speak, on general considerations and the special focus on the step constructions. Today we would like to first look at a general section and see how the step construction actually works before we then derive the corresponding uh, treatment in this diagram uh, that allows us to link different sections with feed status or product removal status, internal heating or whatever. So let's first have a look at this general section. In order to set up the balances, we first have to regard such a general section, section and it is shown here, uh, together with the corresponding control volumes. So we have a general section. We have our counter-current flow that we have defined, an L dot phase moving from top to bottom, a G dot phase flowing from bottom to top. As mentioned already in the previous video, we don't define the state of the two phases. It can be vapor, liquid or solid, whatever you like in principle. We only have to fulfill the assumptions that we set up in the last video as well. The flow rates are now named, so to speak, uh, differently as before. Before we had it for distillation, we had regarded the individual stage and used the index of the stage to characterize the flow rates. Here we want to do it a little bit differently. The I stands for in, so that are the inlet flow rates, XI and YI. And we have the outlet streams, which are YO and XO, that characterize the composition. Of course, according to the assumptions, the L dot is constant throughout the column or the equipment section. But it really has to say equipment section, it not, doesn't necessarily have to be a column. And for the G dot, the same holds, of course. In between, somewhere within that column, we have a general Y and a general X that somewhere meet, so to speak, in between. And what we want to do now is we want to li link the different concentrations that we have at the different levels, so to speak, of this section, equipment section, with some reasonable, um, well, equation in the end which stems from the balances. And of course we know what we are looking for. We are looking in the end for a linear operating line that links, so to speak, this intermediate concentration to those concentrations at the bottom and at the top and the uh, corresponding control volumes that allow us to derive that are shown uh, in this diagram. So we have this top control volume and we have this bottom control volume that we uh, can regard. And we can, of course, set up the balances for these control volumes. So let's first look at the dotted control volume at the top, where we have the xi, the yo, and of course the x and y in between. If we set up the balances for that, how does that look like? Well, of course, uh, well, it doesn't make sense to set up the overall balance because that would just means, mean L plus L dot plus G dot equals L dot plus G dot or actually zero equals all inlet and outlet streams. And since they just match, it just doesn't tell us anything. So we have to set up the balance for the transfer component. And we realized in the last video that the overall flow rate times the concentration measure, measure that we are regarding that characterizes the flow rate of the transfer component. So if we set, up, set that up for one component, what do we obtain? Zero equals. Uh, from the top, the inlet was the L dot xi. It was the inlet from the top. We looked at the top section. Inlet from the bottom was, of course, the G dot. But there the composition didn't carry any index, but that was a general Y. So that are the entering flow rates. What's leaving? The control volume. It is on the one hand side, of course, the L dot again, but now towards the bottom where it has this general composition X, as well as the G dot times towards the top the Y O, the Y outlet or out. Now we can rearrange that. We can divide that by the G dot to somehow get in the direction where we know that we want to go from the um, deriving of the McCaptida diagram. So we get. 
0 equals L dot divided by G dot times Xi plus Y minus L dot over G dot times X minus Y O. And now, of course, we want to solve that for the Y and we want to describe the Y as a function of X, which corresponds somehow to that equation that we derived for the Macapetita diagram, if you remember. That's the same, more or less, where we have some intermediate uh, cut through the uh, column and we looked how do these, these compositions of the two uh, flow rates that meet at that point, how do they relate and this is exactly the relation here between the y and x. So we solve for the y and what we obtain is y equals l dot over g dot times x minus l dot over g dot xi plus y o. And of course, we know that we can go th through the same discussion as we did also for the Macapetita diagram. There we saw that uh, this the flow rates are assumed to be constant, so that's a constant. Xi is a given composition at the top, that's constant as well because of steady state, yo as well, so this is a constant. L dot over g dot is a constant as well, so we have y equals as a constant times x plus a second constant. So we directly know that we have a linear operating line that we have that we can depict with that equation. So well, this gets a box, this equation. And that characterizes one of the operating lines. And we know, of course, that this is the slope. Because, and we know that that is a constant as well, so we know directly that this is fully a straight line, a straight operating line. Now we can do the same thing, of course, for the second control volume. Let's first have a look how that looked like to recall the compositions that we have. It's the uh, inlet is the L dot X I, uh, L dot X, G dot Y I, and leaving is the G dot Y and the L dot X O. Now if we set up the corresponding balance, how does that look like? We do the same thing as before. We write down the balance, zero equals, so steady state equals, and again, I don't have to go into these details, hopefully anymore. We don't regard any reactions, so we don't have any um, production or, or sink term, so that should be fine. So we, we have now the inlets. What was the inlet from the top was L dot X. From the bottom, it was G dot Y of the inlet stream, because the G dot flow rate came from the bottom minus towards the bottom the L dot X O and towards the top we had the G dot Y that was leaving the dashed control volume. We do the same as before. Zero equals L dot over G dot X plus Y I minus L dot over G dot X O minus Y. And again we do the same, we want to solve that for the Y Oops, I still want to see the top equation, so we just can see it, so y equals. If we solve it, we get L dot over G dot times X minus L dot over G dot X O plus Y I. And again, we see that this is a constant, so y equals constant times x, and we also see that that is a constant because in steady state the compositions as well as the flow rates are constant, so it's indeed y equals constant times x plus a second constant. So that gets a box as well. Fine. Now the question is, of course, and, and, we, and we know, of course, that it's the same whole, so to speak, that this is the slope and that that is a constant. Now I again would like to see both of the equations because I would like to regard individual points that characterize, so to speak, these uh, balance lines. So apparently we have two operating lines, they are both are straight lines. Oh, by the way, they have the same slope. The slope is L dot over G dot. And interestingly enough, they have a common point. The x, y corresponds to a common point of both of these operating lines. So actually, it's just one operating line. Yeah? So we have here an operating line with a slope passing through the point x, y, 
which is somehow defined at any point of, uh, within the column, so flow rates that meet there, and the same down here, slope is the same and that point is the same as well. So we know already actually it's only one operating line, yeah, as you may have guessed. Nevertheless, we would like to know what are the endpoints of these, uh, or which are points of these operating lines, and we do the same as we did for, for distillation. And let me write it to the side of that, possibly in blue in this case. We want to assume, um, we want to regard individual points, so to speak, and we want to assume that in the first case, for example, x equals xi. So if that equals that, then we see that this term cancels and we see that the y equals y o. So from that follows y equals y o. Which means, in turn, that one point that satisfies this equation is the point x i y o. This is one point that satisfies this equation. How does it look with the bottom equation? Second point. So there we want to do the same thing, of course. As you may guess, the x equals now the xo, of course. So if that x equals that, then these two terms cancel, and then the y equals the yi. So from that follows that the y equals the yi. So we know that one point that satisfies this equation is now the xo yi. as you possibly may have guessed. So, combining the concentrations at the top of the column and the points that of the compositions that meet at the bottom of the column defines the single operating line, because these two are points of the same uh, line that we, as we have just realized, and the slope of that line is L dot over G dot. So, with that we can actually plot that diagram. And if you plot it, it looks like that. Let me go back to the presentation. We see that we have the y-x diagram, and now it's spelled out actually that you can write it in loads or in, in mole fractions or mass fractions. We didn't specify it was molar load or mass load, or if it was mole fraction or mass fraction. It's always the same. We link the top point, so to speak, x, i, y, o, and the bottom point y i x or x o y i with the operating line, which has a slope l dot over g dot. It's a straight line, and any point x y that meet that describes compositions of flow rates that meet somewhere within that equipment, they have to line on this straight line, as we discussed in the Mercaptile diagram for uh, distillation. Now here some other uh, variables are shown, and I would like to derive those. And what we actually want to do, we want to start out with the uh, top equation again that we had written. Let me uh, repeat that. Um, <coughs> so there we had the um, 0 equals, I just repeat the equation, just to get everything on the same slide, plus g dot y minus l dot x minus g dot y o. And now we can start to regroup that. And if we do that, uh, we can uh, do it in the following way. We can sort that by the flow rates. Because we know something, there is a lever rule, possibly we can get something like a lever rule from such a diagram, and we can group that by the flow rate, so we can say g dot times, so collect all the g dot terms on one side, it's y o minus y, equals the l dot times x i minus x, and then we can regard the ratio of the flow rates, so l dot over g dot, for example, equals uh, y o minus y divided by x i minus x, and we want to call that a over b. And of course we can solve the same type of equations also with the same mathematics with the um, dashed control volume. If we do that, we obtain the following. It's the y minus y i divided by the x minus x o, and we want to call that a prime over b prime. 
at the same time we can also apply the same balances or the overall the balances also to the entire equipment so a big control volume around everything and if we do that we obtain zero equals l dot x i plus g dot y i so the both flow rates with the entering uh, compositions minus the l dot x o minus g dot y o so the both exiting compositions and we can do the same as before we can uh, sort that by the flow rate so the g dot equals y o minus y i equals l dot times x i minus x o and if we solve that for the l dot over g dot we obtain y o minus y i divided by x i minus x o so the slope corresponds to the y difference divided by the x difference which this this was the slope to just to remind you which is of course obvious it has to be such but it also means something graphically about the ratio of the flow rates and if we have a look at that it looks like this come on looks like that we had this over this or this over this which, which is of course both the slope l dot over g dot but it means actually that this length is proportional to the l dot stream which actually corresponds to this composition and the b corresponds to the g dot flow rate so it's a over b so b corresponds to the g dot flow rate which is actually corresponding to this composition so you can regard that as a sort of rectangular lever rule if if you like yeah. it gives you an idea which we, but you, first of all about the slope and the ratios here but it also <coughs> tells you something about the concentration differences. It means if, for example, the, the L dot phase is pretty, uh, the flow rate is pretty high as compared to the G dot phase, you have a steep slope, which means that the uh, corresponding uh, difference in composition on the x-axis is correspondingly small. So you have, if you have a large flow rate of L dot, that composition of that phase will only change less then as compared to the changing composition of the G dot phase, which means if you want to have a high enrichment of one of the components in one of the phases, you can play with this ratio of the flow rate. So if the G dot, for example, is that component that you add, so the, the, the in extraction, for example, it's your extractant that you add, you want to use that G dot for that, then actually you want to achieve a large shift with respect to the, the Y composition, then you get a high enrichment which means that you have to reduce the flow rate of the g dot phase because then you will have a high change in the corresponding uh, compositions yeah? if this is small the slope will be high this concentration difference will be high, high. on the other hand the change in composition of the other phase will be significantly less so you have to see if that makes sense for a specific case, but it shows you directly how this variable, how the slope actually affects the different composition changes in both phases. It's linked. It's linked by a rectangular living, uh, uh, lever rule. That's one thing. Now, secondly, we would also like, of course, to apply uh, this somehow to determine the number of theoretical stages that are required to get from here to there how many theoretical stages are required. And of course, you guess how that works. We have seen that already for the makeup Tito diagram. But let's repeat that. Uh, and I would actually like to plot that in uh, every detail so that you can follow. Let's again switch with the color. We have a certain number of theoretical stages. Let me plot them first. One, when we do the same nomenclature as before, so we number our theoretical stages from top to bottom, we have at the, bottom, uh, at the top an xi and an y out, which is the same as the y1. So we want to regard, so to speak, uh, we want to name the, uh, the compositions again after those, those theoretical stages they are leaving. So this is actually the Y1, which is accidentally, since it's a, this is top of the equipment, the YO, the XI, if you want to call it that way, could also be regarded as the X0, but we don't need that in this context. Uh, then we have an X1 here, X2, 
x3 and so on of course and we have a y uh, yeah if we want to call it an, an a yi here if, if the equipment only has th three theoretical stages we have a y3 a y2 and we had already the y1 and of course the x3 equals the xo in this case with three theoretical stages and now we want to depict that in the corresponding y x diagram and we want to plot that we know in principle how it works because we had seen exactly that diagram as the mccaptile diagram so we have here the y and here the x and we have um, for example the xo here the xi here let's assume that they have, have the yi here and the yo somewhere over here so we know how to plot our balance line so we connect these two points the intersection of the compositions uh, mark the end points of, of our operating line uh, since our control volumes are in orange i prefer to plot the corresponding uh, balance lines in orange as well so this corresponds to our balance line of course in principle it goes on infinitely so the slope here is l dot over g dot and of course if you want to do some statement about uh, equilibrium stages we also have to include the equilibrium information so if we do that let's assume that it looks like this yeah can be a straight line if you are at low concentrations can be something else and then we actually know it can be any curved uh, equilibrium information and then of course we know that we can apply the the step construction and let's go through that again to derive that very generally we have actually done that already for the rectification we saw that the point connecting these two flow rates is exactly this point so this is more or less our starting point so this corresponds to the compositions that meet up here and then we know that the um, this vapor comp uh, this y composition corresponds to that x composition with a theoretical stage in between which is an equilibrium stage so x1 and y1 have to be in equilibrium so we find the x1 at a given y1 which is corresponds to the given yo so that is given so to speak and we ask where is the equilibrium fulfilled for this y and of course this is exactly that point where at the yo the equilibrium condition is fulfilled so here it is where we find our x uh, of theoretical stage one so if you want to start with a step construction we can plot it like this horizontally and then we know that here we actually find our x1 and then we know that the x1 and the y2 meet between two theoretical stages so they are at a horizontal intersection somewhere in that column so they are linked by the operating line the, by the balance line which is the orange line in this case so we find that somewhere over here so this is the y2 and then you know how it continues now we know everything here we again have to regard the equilibrium to obtain our uh, x2 we again have to solve the balance to wind up with our y3 and then we go vertically to find these compositions and of course now we can so this is then the x4 uh, no x3 because we ask for the equilibrium on the third stage and then we ca can count the theoretical stages for uh, the de desired separation task if that is regarded the inlet that should be the outlet then we see that actually we do not need the uh, three theoretical stages it's one two and of this last stage perhaps we need 2.7 or so theoretical stages one two so n which we need is of the order of 2.7 yeah if you would use three stages theoretical stages we would exceed the composition we need less than that so we can estimate somehow how much we actually need and let's assume it's 2.7 you don't need to do that too accurately because as discussed already for distillation this is first of all a theoretical variable and all the uh, your safety margins you will add at the end so uh, you should evaluate it accurately as accurately as uh, reasonable 
as reasonably possible so that the safety margins are only added once at the end of the design procedure and not continually, continually several safety margins because then you are over safe, so to speak. Okay, so we need 2.7 theoretical stages. What I should also indicate is the, the type of the lines. I didn't mention that, so that is the operating line. And uh, this is the equilibrium line. And with that we have derived, so to speak, sort of the Mekhaptida diagram. It looks pretty much like that, at least as some fraction of that, in a very, with very general assumptions. So any counter count process which is in steady state and where the other assumptions apply as well, so that we can subdivide that into theoretical equilibrium stages. In any of these cases, you can apply this step construction directly within any section of that equipment. Of course, you have inlet and outlet flow rates, so product uh, removals or other withdrawals. And of course, that delimits, so to speak, the different sections in which you can apply that. So the following videos will show which different options you have to link, so to speak, these sections. But before that, I would like to show you how that looks if you nicely plot that over here. So this is a plot for four theoretical stages. You see the equilibrium curve and the theoretical stages. Now in this case actually it's an integer number of theoretical stages that corresponds directly to the diagram, so that fits very nicely. And this also shows, if it fits nicely, you see directly, it doesn't matter if you start with your step construction from the top to bottom or from the bottom to top, you will always get the same number. Of course, if it's rational, it depends on the change of the curvature of the equilibrium curve a little bit, but that leads only to uh, marginal changes in the number of theoretical st uh, stages that you determine for being able to perform the re desired uh, separation. It can the, the change is only of the order of some uh, fractional theoretical stage, stage. It definitely has to be less than one theoretical stage because as soon as you would have that, you, it wouldn't work anymore. So if exactly uh, fits, so to speak, then it's exact either way. With that, we would like to collect uh, some take-home message. Any section of a counter current process fulfilling the assumptions can exactly be depicted with the step construction that we have actually derived here, but that we also know already from the Mekhaptida uh, diagram. With that, I would like to say thank you for this uh, video and I hope to see you again in the next video.